Hello, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Tyler Reed. I'm the Manufacturing Applications Manager here at Go Engineer. And today we're going to be talking CamWorks and specifically working with a subspindle and how to more accurately simulate our tool paths when working with a subspindle. We're going to jump right into it today by taking a look at this part here. This is just one of the example parts inside CamWorks, but I like this part because it's relatively complex. It could be a mill turn part or it could be done on a lathe and then as a secondary operation taken to the mill. That's the way we're going to approach it today. We're gonna to be on just a simple single turret lathe, but it is going to have both a main spindle and a sub spindle or a programmable tailstock. We're gonna talk about how to assign certain features and operations to be cut on the sub spindle. We're going to talk about how to program in, say, a transfer between the main and the sub spindle. We're going to talk about how to set up our chucks on both the main and sub and go through the simulation from there. So first thing we're going to do, as always, is we're going to double click into the machine area and we're going to select our machine. In this case, it's just going to be the turn single turret. Now, if I have a sub spindle, I want to make sure that this box down towards the bottom of this screen is checked. Use sub spindle. If it's not checked by default, you can change that in the tech DB. But if we don't have that checked, we're not going to have the ability to set um, spindle attributes to to the sub spindle. While we're in here, we might as well take a look at the chuck definition. So under the chuck tab, we can set up our main spindle chuck and our sub spindle chuck. Chuck management window has a handful of chucks built in. If these chucks don't correspond directly to a chuck that you have, go ahead and just select the closest size chuck. You can edit it and then you can save it. So this is a relatively big part. I'm gonna go ahead and select an eight inch three step chuck. If it's not exactly what I would like, I can come down and change the chuck parameters. Maybe turn this into a 10 inch. I can select whether the jaws are in or out. The number of jaws, right now it's set to six. This might be a three jaw chuck. I can also set the number of steps, the jaw thickness, and then the length and width of each step. Once I've customized that, if I choose, I can save this configuration. I'm going to go ahead and set up something similar on the sub spindle. We'll go 10 inch, three jaw. Notice the sub spindle chuck is way back over here on the right. That's controlled by this distance here. This is the default distance between the home positions on the main and sub spindles. Right now it's set to 30 inches. I can adjust that to match my machine. Again, this is something that would be done in the machine definition within the TechDB so that you wouldn't have to be doing this every single part. Once we have our chucks defined, let's go in and adjust our stock manager. Now, because we are going to be transferring this part, I'm not going to add a lot of stock. I'm, I'm going to try to cut this blank to uh, as close a size as possible. So maybe plus or minus, or maybe plus a hundred thousandths on each side. The stock that it came up with is this minimum bounding cylinder. We're gonna go ahead and change this to aluminum. We're going to up the OD from six inches to say seven. This is a cord part. We might as well start with a cord stock. Give it a two inch core. The overall length right now is five inches and that corresponds directly to 
our part size. I'm going to go ahead and bump that up to 5.2. So that's what we're going to aim uh, to saw it at. And then we're going to offset it 5.1. So there's a hundred thousandths on each side here. Now, if you choose to, we took the time to define the chucks. You can choose to display them or not while programming. If you choose to display them, you would go to the operations tree, right click on the machine, and you can select the chuck display here. None wireframe or shaded. I tend to leave it off while I'm programming uh, because it doesn't always display in the correct position uh, while programming and it can also impede my vision of what I'm programming. So I typically set it to none. For right now I'm going to leave it on shaded and you can see right there how, what, how that displays. All right. Now we're going to start programming this guy. I'm going to go ahead and use the automatic feature recognition. And we're going to talk about the results. So it found one setup. Note that Z direction means the tool is coming from the right and moving towards the left. Okay. It found the face of the model highlighted there in green. It found the OD feature. Notice it did take the revolve section. It accounts for that tab. It found the ID feature. It found a groove inside the ID. And it found a cutoff. So some of these I'm going to use in from this direction and some of them I'm not. So knowing that I'm going to program with a sub spindle and I'm going to be do a transfer between them. One thing I might do is right click on this cutoff feature and say convert to face feature. All right. So right off the bat now it's no longer a cutoff. It's a face. Now the next thing I need to do is since it's still under this original turn setup but we're going to be cutting from the opposite direction. I need to double click in here and set the spindle attribute to sub spindle. Okay, so we're going to do this, setting that spindle attribute to the sub spindle in situations where our setup is in the opposite direction that we're going to be cutting from. Okay, so this is one method of two that we're going to use to program for sub spindle. Okay, so we can have the setup in the main spindle direction, but then set the feature to be cut by the sub spindle. Okay. I might do this on the rectangular groove as well. Since the groove is on the back side of the part, I might just double click into it or right click and edit definition and set it to the sub spindle. Okay. The other method I can use is to create a whole new setup from the opposite direction. So I would right click on the stock manager, new turn setup, and I'm simply going to select the reverse direction. So note the Z direction now is the opposite side. And this is going to act as uh, a setup being held by the sub spindle. Okay. And now I can create my own features on this setup. I can also copy features from one setup to the next. So this OD feature, I'm probably going to have to cut it from both directions. It's already been created once. There's no sense in me recreating it. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to hold control. I'm going to click and drag it down. So that's going to copy it from one setup to the next. I can also right click on a feature and say copy features and I can copy it to a certain setup using this method as well. I'm going to go ahead and do that on the ID feature in this case. Now this groove, 
In some cases, I could simply click and drag this to the opposite setup. And if I had done that, then I would not have needed to set it to the subspindle attribute, okay? But since I don't wanna recreate it, I don't wanna copy it, I'm gonna leave it in the original turn setup, I'm gonna change the spindle attribute. Now these OD features, or excuse me, the ID features are set to a drill strategy. And since this is a cord piece of stock, drill is probably not the strategy I want. I'm gonna go ahead and double click into each one of these and set it to the course strategy. Course is going to use a, a bore, uh, boring rough cycle and a boring finish cycle. Okay, so at this point, I have my features that I want to cut. We're gonna run these through the database. The database is going to look at the feature types, the sizes. It's going to look at the strategies that I have selected. It's going to look if it's set to the main spindle or sub spindle. And it's going to create operations for me. Now notice what this did. So it kicked me over to the operations tree. I have turn setup one, which is the original direction. And I have some face rough and finish cycles, OD fit rough and finish, and the boring rough and finish. And then it jumps over to setup two, which was the opposite direction. We can see the chuck has changed position. It's got the OD and the ID roughing and finish. And then it comes back to turn setup one, but it's labeled as a sub setup, okay? And the under these setups are going to be the features that remained in turn setup one, but I changed the spindle attribute. So this is going to be the groove and the facing of the model, okay? And here's a situation where I mentioned having the chuck display turned on while programming, at least in the case of sub spindle, doesn't always display in the correct position. But when we move over to the simulation, we'll see that it is in the correct position here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the chuck display off for right now. Let's throw some toolpath on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate toolpath for all of the operations. And we're going to have to throw some Z limits on here because we are going to be doing that transfer. And because our features were the entire length of the part, we're going to get situations like this. So here's the OD roughing, moves all the way down to the end of the part. We don't really want that. We're, the same thing goes for the ID. We're gonna be cutting it from two directions. We don't need this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set up a, a Z limit for the entire setup, okay? So I'm gonna double click on the setup. I'm gonna to go to advanced. Under the Z end option, I'm gonna say user defined. Click this pick a point icon. And I'm just gonna select the end of that tab. I don't want my tool to go past that tab. Now I'm setting up a Z limit for the entire setup. Each individual operation has to be told to use that setup definition. And mine aren't set up that way out of the TechDB, so I'm gonna have to come in here and click on each one. This is definitely a checkbox that you could set up in the TechDB if you'd like, if you use setup definitions often. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and regenerate my tool paths, and let's take a look at what what we have now. So we have our face rough and our face finish. Then we have the OD roughing. Notice it doesn't pass the edge that I selected. And if I turn my chuck display back on real quick, we'll be able to see right away that we're still clear of the chuck. Okay, that's pretty important. and the roughing cycles on the bores, okay? 
Now from the opposite side, notice how much it's actually cutting. It also stops at that edge uh, because in turning, it's always looking at the work in progress. So it um, it's never gonna run the tool over an area that doesn't have material to cut. So when I'm cutting features from one side and the other, I really only have to limit the Z on the first step. And then the work in progress, just the nature of how CamWorks operates is going to take care of the rest. So we have our turn, we have our OD rough, we have our OD finish. We have our boring cycle. Okay, and then here's the grooving now. Let's turn our chuck display off. The grooving does come from the left-hand side and it's come in and it's going to come in and groove. Now the face feature didn't generate any tool path because it's actually being cut with as part of the OD, uh, the OD finish. I could override that if I want. I could come in and I could adjust say the Z start. I could add a Z start limit. I could also under the feature options tab at a start length or a start offset. But in this case, I'm not going to worry about it. We're cutting our features. These tools are going to work, so we're good to go. Let's talk about setting up the chuck position. Within each turn setup, we can select the origin location. We can add an offset. So if you're using work offsets, uh, on turning, this is where you would input those. Then you have the chuck location. And the chuck location is going to give you a representation of the stock shape at the beginning of the setup. And it's going to have these arrows. And these arrows are going to correspond to where the chuck actually clamps onto the part. Okay, so in this case, it, we look good. Uh, if we wanted to offset this, we could. So if we wanted to choke up on the part, we do have some room and assuming we have a clearance hole in our chuck that would allow our stock to move into the chuck, we could choke up on the part. Let's turn the display back on. So in our, you can see I can set it up wherever I'd like. The important thing here is that you want to match up in CamWorks, how you're actually going to set up the part. I can even choke down on it as well. Okay. Now, before we set up the chuck on the next steps, let's talk about the transfer. This first setup is going to be from one direction and the rest of the tools are going to be coming from the second direction. So we need to program our transfer. We have to do it at some point between the bore finish and the turn rough. And it doesn't make a difference if I do it under the first setup or the second setup. If I do it at the first setup, I'm going to put it at the end. If I do it at the second setup, I'm going to put it at the beginning. Okay. I'm going to add this uh, sub spindle operation by right clicking on the setup that I want to add it to. I'm going to select new sub spindle operation. And it's going to pull up a list of available templates that I have written into my post processor uh, to control various actions I might want to do with my tailstock. Okay, so some examples of this would be grab and pull by a distance, just grab and pull, arbitrary amount, just grab the part. So now you'd be gripping it with both the main and the sub at the same time. In sub, grab and pull, standard transfer, and sub spindle home. These are customizable. They're written into the post and um, anything really to do with the sub spindle, a lot of that is done with the post. Things like clearances and making sure your Z direction's in the correct spot. That's something that we work with you through the post because different machines operate differently. So we're gonna do just a standard transfer. I'm gonna select this template. Hit the green check. It's gonna take me over to this next window which is going to bring up the actual steps um, of this template. 
So we can see each step is very granular. The main spindle turns off, the sub spindle turns off. The main spindle orients to C0, the sub spindle does the same. Then the spindle rapids to a certain position, then feeds to a certain position at a certain feed rate. It, the sub spindle is going to clamp onto the part. There's going to be a five second dwell. The main spindle is going to unclamp. Another five second dwell. And then the spindle is going to wrap it home. Now each, this is just the template. Each one of these we can override. So if I don't need to do a five second dwell, I can change that to say one second on each of these steps. If I want to change where the spindle is actually going to grab the part, I can override the spindle feed. Okay, I can change the Z position and override exactly where it's going to grab the part. Okay, I can, I can change the feed rate as well. So since I added it to the turn setup too, it shows up as a line item here. I'm going to pull it to the very top of my setup. Because that's where it's going to actually occur in the timeline. Now let's talk about the chuck positions. So under turn setup two, we can see a mistake here on the turn or in the chuck position. This should be grabbing the OD. So I'm going to go ahead and activate that window and select that guy. Now, if I had offset this in my transfer templates, if I had told it to uh, rapid and then feed to a different position than the default, I would want to make sure I put the corresponding offset in this window here to make sure that my simulation is accurate. And then lastly, we'll do the chuck location on the actual sub spindle um, setup. Turn set up one sub. Okay, so now it's time to simulate this guy. So when you're simulating, um, especially when we're doing some complex stuff like this, we do want to make sure that we have our chuck display turned on. And collision checking is also a good idea. Collision checking with the tool and also collision checking with the holder. And then something I find useful is instead of just simulating this from the beginning to the end, simply simulate it to the next operation so we can see one at a time. So there's the face rough, the face finish. There's the OD roughing, OD finish, or rough, or finish. Now notice the uh, the actual transfer doesn't really get uh, simulated um, in this particular simulation. If we were to put this into the G-Code machine simulator, it would simulate the actual movement and grabbing of the subspindle. But in the standard camwork simulation, it just transfers over. We get a representation of where the chuck has been defined to grab the part. And it went ahead and did the turn rough from the opposite side. Now we're going to do the turn finish, boring rough, bore finish, and then grooving rough and finish. Okay. Now at this point, we, run a, we would want to run a comparison or show the difference between our model as we've cut it against as it's drawn up in SOLIDWORKS. So you're looking at a color-coded representation here. Anywhere we're, we're green, we're considered right on. Any cool colors, blues, light blues, were undercut. And uh, any, if there was any warm colors, reds and yellows, we'd be considered overcut. So we're looking pretty good here. This is exactly where I would want to end up if I'm going to take this and then load it up onto the mill. 
as the stock. And if I were to do that, I can save this shape as a work in progress. Now, something you might want to do if you plan on saving this shape out and using it as a stock for a separate setup, I would definitely go into the options and bump your quality all the way up. It's going to force you to rerun it. But that way, the STL file that is generated is going to be as high quality as possible. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this second icon from the right, save work in progress as STL. I'm going to save it to my desktop. I am going to save this in inches. Take note the units you're saving it in. Okay, now the turn setup's good. We're actually ready to post process this at, at this point. The sub spindle operations have been defined. The, the transfer has been defined. We're good to go. So that about covers what we wanted to cover in this webinar. But real quick, I'm going to show you how to read in that stock shape for a mill part setup. So if I want to do turning and milling on the same part, I'm actually going to create a second configuration within Camworks. So I'm going to right click on the configurations tab, say new config. This time I'm going to use a mill machine, so I'm not going to change the machine. But when I come into the stock manager, I'm going to select the STL file option, which is the third option. I'm going to browse to that STL I just saved. Make sure the units match up in this drop down window. And now we can see the representation of our stock is going to be accurate to what I'm actually going to load up on the machine. This is going to help us program it more efficiently because we can tell Camworks to take into account the stock shape. It's also going to help us simulate it more accurately and get a good view of actually what we're cutting here. So to recap, let's head back to the turn configuration. To recap, if we're using a sub spindle in the machine entry, we need to check the use sub spindle box in the bottom. And we should set up chuck information for the main and the sub spindle. And then when it comes to actually creating features, you have two options. You can do all of the features or some of the features within the main spindle direction but then double click into a feature, or if you're manually creating the feature at the time of creation, set it to the sub spindle uh, attribute. The second method is to create a setup in the opposite direction. And in those cases, you're going to use the main spindle attribute. Okay, so those are the two methods. And then when we're going to program a transfer between them, we would right click on the setup, select new sub spindle operation, and then select the correct template and input our correct values based on what we would like to see. That's gonna do it for this webinar. Uh, hopefully that gives you a better idea of what it's going to look like to use a sub spindle within Camworks. Thank you guys for joining. If you have ideas or suggestions for further webinars, please let me know. Or if you have any questions, you can shoot me an email at tread at goengineer.com or comment on the YouTube video. I definitely read all the comments. So thank you guys for joining. Have a great weekend. <music>